Hi, welcome to the small shed. This week I'm refurbishing a hand plane. See you in a minute. Now, I don't normally, there are plenty of videos of people doing plane restorations. So this is not a how to do it. This is a how I'm going to do it. There is a bit of a story in that this one is, or was, my dad's. So I'm going to go right through that one and basically take it fully apart, do the other one separately off camera and just, if you like, show you what I'm doing to make it into what I hope is a nice, working, useful, sharp plane. And I'll do this one up as scary sharp and just do that one on the normal um, stones and we'll see you know it's subjective I think but I will see if I can uh, find any great difference between the two and as to whether or not this is worth all the hype that I hear about it so we'll put all that to one side and let's make a start on the plane and the first thing to do is essentially is to take it right back to pieces The aim is to not to restore it to factory condition or make it look as if it's just been made. It's to get all the rust off, tidy it up and get the bits of paint off that are on the lab on the knobs and things like that. In fact it's I won't say disappointing, but it's a fact that this one actually has got the plastic handle and uh, a knob but I'm not going to do anything about that because of what it is if you like it was dad's and therefore it's one of the few of his tools that I've still got and it gives you that connection with the past and in particular in my case with the person that taught me pretty much everything I know about what little I do know if you see what I mean so we will treat it with a bit of care and love but not make it brand new so fairly rapidly we've got it down to its main constituent parts the only real important one of course is the blade but um, the rest of it could do with a good clean anyway. Right that's as far as it's going to be taken apart I think. And we'll work our way through. As I say the only disappointing thing is that I can't do anything really with this because it's a, it's a molded plastic to make it look like wood but uh, we'll give it a coat a bit of polish anyway. I'm going to start off with the, the base and really it's a matter of getting that sole plate flat so I need to get something um, like a piece of glass get some sandpaper on it and then I can run it back and forwards do the side cheeks as well and that gives you a, a reasonably good starting point. I've just noticed in fact there is a very slight crack by the look of it or a floor, it's, it's either a crack or a floor in that plate there um, that is just to the side of the, the throat which I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything about other than flatten it out into nothing. I will investigate it further to find out whether it's just a, a casting that's never been properly sorted. It, it does look as if that might be what it is because I can't see any evidence on the inside of any sort of damage. So whether it's just one that slipped the net when they were making it and has not quite or shouldn't have passed quality control. But 
there is no evidence on the inside. We've also got a, an old brush and a spot of isopropyl alcohol just to get all the accumulated grubbiness and filth off the plate itself. Again, I don't think I'm going to be sort of repainting it or anything, but um, just to get all the sawdust and oil that's been in there for years. It's looking better already. So to get the sole flat, just got a piece of plate glass going to tape um, a bit of 120 grit sandpaper down. That should give me uh, a reasonable indication. I think as soon as you start rubbing you'll see where or not the wear comes out and you can see whether or not it's got any great discrepancies in it. So we get the plane and just rub it backwards and forwards on that and it will just take a few minutes but we make sure we get a bottom flat and that's probably as flat as it'll ever get I mean I, I did have a long conversation with somebody once who was very pedantic about the fact that plate glass wasn't completely flat because it was cast on beds of tin and there are huge length on these vats of tin that you cast it on and uh, they would actually follow the earth's contour so that over a piece of glass you'd actually get a very slight radius on it but I decided it wasn't going to affect anything I'd ever do. So there we are, it's starting to show up, it doesn't look too bad, there's a little area there that's lower and as I say there is this area of cracking that, or, or it's either a bad casting or a crack, I can't quite make up my mind yet but we'll see how that transpires at the end of the day but I can't do a lot with it, it is there anyway and the same with the sides, I'll just do the same thing just more than anything, there's no need for these to be flat or anything but it's just to get the rust off them and we get something which is um, nice to use. And that's got me pretty flat. I've still got the very slightest uh, distortion around that corner area there but I'm I think without taking quite a lot off the whole of the surface I'm just never going to get anywhere. It is now flat which it wasn't before. There was effectively a bump there so I've taken the top off it but it's still um, just slightly odd in that place. But that's got that piece pretty much tidied now. I've got all the other pieces I've just taken most of the rust off um, the plain blade itself that was rusty and if you look at it against the what I started with that's the sort of difference as I say I'm not trying to make it look like it's new but I'm trying to make it look like it's loved. Um, what I'm going to do now is to take the whole lot out into the garage and put it on a polishing mop as well just to get it up to a slightly better finish. One thing you will have to expect when you're doing this is that your hands will get filthy from it but um, I think it's worthwhile in the long run. Right, that's got me a kit of parts to put back together now, all shiny and, well, as, as clean as I can get it and as rust free as I can get it. It's not perfect but I don't want it perfect but we can now put it back together as far as I can and I can then worry, get on with doing the blade then. Right, 
Right, just been putting a spot of oil over the whole of the uh, plane now, just to help prevent any further rust. I must make a, a, a rag with oil soaked in it. The Paul Sellers does a like a tin that he fills up with um, cloth, soaks it in oil, and then you can rub it all over your tools must do one of those but that's got that one done so effectively there's a sort of a before and an after there so it's not perfect as I said but it's a lot better than it you know than the previous one I've managed to lose the um, screw for the front knob so I've temporarily had to swap one out from that one at the moment but we'll find that it'll turn up no doubt in one of the drawers or something but um, I think we've got it done otherwise so all I need to do now is take this blade out and sharpen it. I've just spent nearly two hours working on this plane blade. It was really a long way out. Um, I can't remember whether that was me trying to do it without um, proper guides or whether it's just never been sharpened in its life since I've had it but I think I'm just about there now it took an awful lot of work with that 300 stone um, probably should have a grinder really to uh, to do these with but it's the sort of thing that once the thing is set up you don't really need it after that once it's pretty much there it only needs a tickle to get it sharp so nearly there once I've got this um, finely sorted you can put a micro bevel on it with by just adjusting that little knob and then we'll put it back in the plane and that will give us effectively a, a normal if you like sharpened blade and I'll come back to the scary sharp side of things with the separate video later on So that's got the plane back to being a nice useful tool that I can uh, go for every time I want to do any planing. It, before it was rusty and sad and didn't work at all well so it's been a, a useful exercise on that score. But there is, as ever with anything with me, a bit of a backstory as well. Um, as I said this was my dad's plane. Sadly, um, Dad passed away on 11th of November many years ago, but it was one of those days that obviously, being Remembrance Day, I'm not going to forget lightly. Um, it was a bit of a coincidence that I'd sat with him the night, through the night before, and uh, he passed away in the morning on the 11th. So it's doubly sort of significant. I've got my granddad's first world war medals that I've got to put back up on the wall that I've taken down for something else so it's a sort of a double remembrance as far as I'm concerned not only those that have given up their lives over the years in battles and limbs you know it's not just the people that died it's the people that are still alive that are suffering uh, as a result of war and stupidity but also, as I say, memory of my dad as well. So I hope the video was of interest. Look forward to seeing you next time. We'll be doing something different. And I look forward to seeing you then. Bye.